everybody, welcome back to the next video in this series. We are about ready to start the German fire phase. Uh, I think this goes through the whole first sub phase. If it doesn't, we'll just stop whenever it stops. If it goes through the whole sub phase, we'll cover the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to zoom out because that just gets too close. I kind of like this angle. I know it's probably not optimal when you're watching online, according to people. But that's just, that's too zoomed in. So it's almost uncomfortable playing it at that, le <laughs> at that level. So it, it's going to be what it's going to be. So we are going to start the German fire phase. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a few on the American beaches. And then I think I'm just going to blow through. I'll show you the difference on the the uh, UK beaches, British beaches, Canadian beaches. Um, we'll kind of show you the difference, and uh, you'll kind of get the feel for that with Utah versus Omaha. But I'm going to go through, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six of them in detail, and maybe five, and then I'm just going to quit. Uh, and I'm going to kind of just blow through them to the next phase. If we don't get to the next phase, It'll, it'll keep the videos shorter, and you don't have to have me walk through every combat. If you have a question about one, or if down the road I see one that's really unique, and I'll try not to bounce my foot, that's a nervous habit, and it shakes my laptop, so I apologize for that. Um, so we'll do that. Now, this is going to do a lot of jumping back and forth because the charts and everything are up here, right? And I'm going to show you that. When I play, I have a printout of this. Uh, from the actual game that you get uh, using these, and I use the sheet of paper, so I'm looking at that so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth. But since we're watching technically a log file replay, it'll jump back and forth. And that's the nice thing about this is once I do a handful of them, I can just click, 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 and you'll actually kind of be able to see what's happening fast, almost like a time-lapse photography, but uh, without having to waste, you know, an hour and a half or two hours, we can just you know, spend two minutes. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Thanks for watching. Remember to support the channel. You can uh, click on any of the links there. They'll take you to Amazon or my, or my uh, business website for my actual game store if you don't have a friendly local game store. And uh, that'll help support the business. And remember to subscribe if you haven't. That helps the channel get uh, better ranking. And if you like the video, like it. And feel free to comment, uh, good, bad, or whatever. So if you guys notice anything I'm doing wrong, Remember, the whole point of these videos is for us to learn. So if you guys see something that I'm getting wrong, by all means, let me know in the comment section and I will address it in one of my later videos. I'm not talented enough to go back and edit and change things or put words on there without, I don't understand all that stuff. So I'm, I'm just a gamer that likes the game and finds this a, way, a fun way to get out there and share uh, my passion and help teach. And I've I've watched tons of YouTube videos with guys teaching me how to play games. So, you know, it's kind of like trying to give back a little bit. So, but again, we're all here to learn. So if you see something that doesn't look right, let me know and we'll figure it out together. Either we can correct you if you had it wrong or or we can get me corrected if I got it wrong. It's, it's all about doing it the right way. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you remember, <coughs> we did the first few. Uh, we're in the amphibious module. And those have these eight, uh, basically, segments. You have the landing segment that we did, which is basically uh, the first one's a little more detailed because you land, you have to do DD, DD tanks, and uh, drift segment for the first turn. There's no more drift segment. Uh, you got to clear obstacles. Those are those red squares, if you remember. And now we're going to do the German fire segment. We might go through all these. We'll see. We'll see where we're at, but let's go ahead and get started. So I need to put this down. I think I, I thought I, I thought about doing it zoomed in, but that's just too much. So I think I'm just going to do it at this level. It's just way easier to, to see what's going on. So, okay. So like I said, the beaches, they look pretty nice right now. There's not a lot of chaos. There's a few step losses, a few pin marks. Um, like our artillery here has already taken a hit. I can see some pin marks. I don't know why I have a step loss under that guy. He should have just been flipped, I think, because over here I was doing tanks with four. So they have one until they flip over to two. So 
Anyway, we'll get that corrected. You'll see, again, you're going to see some examples where I make some minor mistakes. I catch them, but you're also going to see the thing that I talk about a lot in Wargaming. The mistake I made, it didn't change anything on one of them. It was the same column, right? So don't get too tied up in in perfection. I mean, like I said, we always want to do our best. I want to play the game the best I can to my ability, but we're not going to go back and redo little tiny minor things. We're just going to move onward and upward. All right, so I'm going to use this little spade. Remember, I like to use that kind of as my pointer. Uh, it, it just kind of helps keep track of where things are going at. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and walk through. And if you haven't had a chance to watch the boot camp video, I'd highly recommend you do that. Or if you own, um, I don't think I have a printed out copy here. If you own Atlantic Wall, which you should if you're playing it, but um, there's a diagram in there. I find that diagram to be a little busy for me. So I certainly like the other videos that other people have done and um, like to explain it too. So if it helps. So let's go ahead and walk through it. So, uh, so first of all, we're going to look at, uh, when you do the beaches, you start in the back row and you go here and then you go to the next row up and go here. And then you'd go up to this row here if there were guys there and then up to here and do your things there. Right now you could do that. I think one of two ways, I don't think it matters. I don't think you have to do like all the way across all the beaches in the back. Sometimes I do that to, to mix it up a little bit. Other times I do one beach at a time, but just start in the back left corner and work your way across. So here we're going to fire, we're going to fire everyone that can fire into this box. Okay. And this is, this is what's going to show you how this works a little different. These guys don't just fire once and they're done. They get to fire into any boxes that they're eligible to fire in. And the, rest, the way to restrict them is to get in front of them or to get on their space so that they are busy with you. It'll lower your firepower casualties quite a bit. So we got WN5. Uh, it's the only one that can fire in this box because WN7 can fire down this sec uh, subsector here straight in front of it. And then he can fire down to the left and he can fire, well, I guess this would be his right and then his left um, because there's nobody right in front of him. If there was somebody in front of him that would limit his ability to fire just out to the here, he wouldn't be able to fire all the way down. So anyway, so we have WN5, okay? And these DD tanks are already helping us where Omaha is not going to get any of that love. These DD tanks take some of his attention. so. It, so unlike this guy, if he was firing into this hex at somebody with nobody here, and I know I call them hexes, you just have to work with me on that. This would be times two, but since there's DD tanks in front of him, it only lets him fire into this back row with a strength of one. Again, go back to the boot camp video and watch that. It'll walk you through it. So that's already helping us, okay? So he's got a strength of one. And again, nobody else is firing in there. And you'll see more when we get over here, all that, because Utah is not the greatest beach to learn on, but that's the order I played it. So, I mean, it's a great one for learning it, but it's not a great one to show for an example. So um, that puts us on the one column, which is right here. And I'm going to use this little box that somebody put in this and use that to kind of highlight where we're at. So we're going to be in the one column. And then over here, we have our die roll modifiers. So we're going to want to go through those each time. Okay. so. It's a low tide because the Americans are coming in on low tide, so that's a negative one. It's the first sub phase, and that's in the AM game turn only. So in this, in the you know first sub phase of the PM turn or the night turn or even the next day, if you're having trouble getting off the beach, it only goes. It says right here, AM game turn. Okay, and also the low tide low tide is for beach boxes only. Okay, the minus one that doesn't doesn't help against the shingles. So. We got a minus one for low tide. We got a minus one for the first sub phase. We got a plus one for unpinned armor in the box. So I'm going to go show you that. Uh, at least I hope I'm going to. Okay, let me fix this. I was messing around with the sizes earlier because I really wanted to be zoomed in, but that's just too weird. It just does not look well. So, okay. So now I can scroll back over. So right here, we got some unpinned armor in the box. I like to try to stack my guys with light guys when I'm playing because it makes it a lot easier. Here I spread them out a little bit, you know, just for, I guess, traumatic 
appearance, but here's all my infantry. I got three of those, so that's a step and a half infantry, because remember, every two of those counters equals a step on the invasion units. I got a, uh, well, that's actually three full steps of engineers, because each of those has four steps on it, so each one of those is a step. I got a leader, Roosevelt, and he's, uh, it doesn't matter where you stack him, but he's on top of the uh, artillery, some armored artillery for the army, and then I got this, uh, I think that's a half a step of armor. I want to say armor is eight, but we'll worry about that when we get to it. All right. So anyway, so that gives us a plus one for unpinned armor. <coughs> Excuse me. And then a might, so that gives us a minus one total. And you want a minus one because the lower you are. So if the Germans can get over here, like if you see under seven, there's an A. The best you can get on a one is a C. The one column is the only one where you can get a no result, where you don't get to do anything. And the best result you can get is a C. So then you can see, if you look at these, hey, you get a C, you can see. So if you look here at the E, it's a little more sporadic. There's a lot more ones. And as you get deeper and deeper into this, you go over here, there's no blank spots at all in the A column. And there's lots of ones and twos and multiples. Like So the first number is the number of steps you take, and the second number is how many units get pinned. We'll go over that. But, uh, yeah, so you can see you don't want to be in the A column because that gets nasty. So it's going to be a D10 roll with a minus one. And we roll a 1, so that's uh, pretty good. So that equals a 0, which is a C. Now we have to go roll on the fire results table. Okay, and there's some modifiers. There's not a lot, but they're right down here. Okay. We have a minus 1 if there's no armor or weapon units in the box. You get a 0 modifier if there's 1 to 2 armor or weapon units in the box. And if you remember, we have a tank unit and a weapon unit, so that's going to give us the zero modifier. If you have three to four armor or weapon units in the box, you get a plus one, because lots of nice targets to hide behind, or a plus two if you have five or more armor and weapon boxes, okay? So we want, the Allies want them to roll high, the Germans again want to roll low. The lower it is, usually the deadlier it is. Now, not necessarily the case. I think if you look at the charts, the bigger factor is trying to get into A through C, D and E are a lot more sporadic, but this is this part here to me is kind of a luck thing because you can roll a zero and not hit any armor, and you can roll a nine and you can get a hit, right? Um, but then up here for infantry, you roll a nine, nothing happens, but a zero, you get a hit and a pin. So again, I think this is a little more just chance of the dice, but what really matters is if the Germans can get into the higher, you know, A, B, C especially A and B, they're going to do more damage. So we got a zero modifier. So we roll a seven. All right. And then I'm going to use this little black line here, and I'm going to put the numbers above it. Um, so that ends up being armor is a one, one P. Infantry suffers a one P. Engineer suffers a one. Weapons suffers nothing. The little dash is nothing. And I'll explain what those are. The first, and I kind of did, but I'll just go through it slowly. The first number before the slash under the armor means you take a hit. That's a step loss. The second no one, if there's one after the slash and a number, it tells you how many units get pinned. So you can see up here, if we would have rolled a five or a six, there would be no step losses, but the armor would have had two pin results. Okay, And that's going to matter because as that stuff, it'll still move up onto the shore and do stuff, uh, depending on the tide. Um, but it doesn't get to fire, and if it's a low tide, it sits out there and it doesn't get to move up as fast. Now, that's what the leaders are for. They get to unpin units if they're in a in a space with them. They get to do one unit, I think it is. So I got a little bit of a dry throat today. I don't know if it's some meds I'm on or what, but I apologize for that. Okay, so we got a 1-1-P one, one for the armor. So that means one step loss and one pin. Now, uh, the, the, if you have an armor unit that takes a step loss, you can also pin that unit, but you can't use like two pins on the same armor if there's more than one. You can't really pin more than once, but the whole point is you got to spread it out as much as you can. Unless there's a hit, you can put a hit and a pin on the same guy. The infantry, it looks like we're going to take one of them is going to get pinned, and the engineers are going to take a step loss. Okay, so that's, you know, that's pretty good for coming out of the gate with only one WN firing on the C column and hitting everything but the weapons team at some result, right? 
So we jump over here. So we put the step loss under the armor. Now move that guy over and put a pin marker on him. And I'm going to put a step loss on this engineer since he has three or four. Now he's a three. And then since the armor got pinned, I'm going to put the pin on both of them. I, I like to put all the pin guys in one stack. Keeps it a little cleaner for me. You do it however it works for you. Um, anyway, so that's the result. So that's that's pretty good for uh, a single WN with a one dot on it. So let's look at this one here. So if we remember the rules for shooting, WN5, because these units here are in front of him, he can shoot into here, but he cannot shoot into here. And if he would have been able, like let's say these guys were in here, it would have only been one. This guy doesn't have anybody. WN7 has nobody in front of him, so he can shoot into here and to here at a strength of one. So, uh, we kind of already did that. Uh, so we get one firepower, uh, and it's going to be with a negative one because they do have one armor and one weapon team in there, and they also have uh, first sub phase. It's the same modifiers as the last one just happened to be. All right, so we roll an eight. Uh, that turns into a seven. So if you look at the uh, one firepower turned into a seven, so that's the E column, right? So we're going to be on the E column when we roll. Now we have to roll the E column, and it should be a zero modifier, I believe. Uh, same modifiers because there's one weapon team. Now they rolled a one. Again, I think this is more of an issue of luck, so the low number here doesn't necessarily equate to more hits always. It more does here, but still. Uh, so if we go up here in the 1 to 2, we can see the infantry takes a step, and the weapon team takes a step. Now, that's not great, because uh, the weapon team can take two hits and stay on the board. If it takes a third hit, I believe it comes off. I can't remember. It might be able to take three hits. But... Regardless, uh, this guy now has two step losses, so I know by playing this game that when he does finally exit off the beach, because he took two step losses, they're going to have to basically reorganize him and get him fixed up. So he's going to delay coming out onto the map. So they're already going to be going onto the map with one of their armored artillery. And that's with, you know, two two WNs here firing at him. And very, I mean, even the obstacles are lower on Utah. So case you're wondering, you're kind of getting a taste of how bad Omaha is going to be compared to Utah. Okay, so we took the hit, so I'll put two step mosses under that guy, and then it, what was it, an engineer? Yep, an engineer took a hit, so we put a step loss there. And that's uh, that's not it for Utah. Uh, so now we jump up to here. So remember, we started here, we go all the way across, but there's only two in Utah, and then we start up here and we go across you keep moving up the rows until you're done. But we only have these four. So here we are. So WN can fire at them times two because it's right in front of them. Uh, um, it's uh, low tide. Uh, first sub phase only. And I think I did that wrong. Um, it's plus one for a box with unpinned armor. Plus one for being in an adjacent subsector and plus four for the shingle, so it ends up being a plus four. Okay, so we're gonna get a plus four on the two column. We roll a four, that's gonna turn into an eight. So if you go down the list here, that's an E, okay? And just remember the low tide, I think I did that wrong the whole time, but that's that's just the way it goes. It only happens on the beach boxes, which are these back here. Not these up here. These are the shingle box. And, you know, you can remove your pieces. So see where it says shingle here. Oops, I actually picked up a guy. So right where it says shingle there, that's the shingle box. Right here is the shingle box for Omaha. And the beach box is there for Omaha. So um, let me put that guy back there. Okay, but let's, let's move onward and upward. We're not going to worry too much about it. So we roll a D10. And we're, we're we on the E column, it looks like. And... We have two armor units there, so it should be zero modifiers. We roll a nine on the E column. And if you look over here, even with a high roll, that's going to ping an armor for a step loss. So, <laughs> so we now 
We only have armor there, so you notice over here, there's a pin for an en engineer and a pin for a weapon team. Anything that doesn't apply to any whatever's in the box, you don't have to worry about it. You just move on, right? So <clears throat> we'll take a hit on the armor. And we go over here. So this one will be him firing down here at one and him firing at one. So it's going to be another two, okay? Uh, same modifiers before, except I shouldn't have been taking the one, but I know I did that by mistake. Uh, so each chart, no modifiers, they roll a one. And if you look at a one on there, what is that? See, so low doesn't really matter on the lettered box roll. It's more on the fire value, not the result table. So they get lucky and they don't take anything. All right, now let's go to Omaha. I'm going to scroll up here now. Omaha <laughs> already doesn't look very nice, does it? That's just the way it is. So we're going to walk through. I don't know. We'll do three, maybe this fourth one here, and then I'm just going to start going through them. Otherwise, this video will be three hours long. So let's go ahead and start going through some of them. So uh, we don't have anybody in the shingle box because all of our tanks sunk, and the rest of them I decided I want to put them on uh, DD. And just to clarify, if you didn't watch the boot camp video or my other videos, I have all these labels on there because I actually wanted to label all the invasion steps based on who they actually were coming in this fox red, fox green. Which, if you're playing on Vassal or if you're really nerdy like me and you're willing to do the extra work, I highly recommend keeping track of the actual uh, invasion steps and who they belong to because... I, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I'm already on this June 7th turn. And when stuff starts coming off the beaches on the 6th, guys are, when they got, you know, not necessarily in Omaha, but when they started coming over here and coming over here and going off the beach and going onto the main map, it's just even more chaos, which is even more awesome. Because then they have to get to each other so that they can join up and, and reorganize and be ready. So I love it. I, I dig that kind of stuff, especially when you're playing solo. It makes it more chaotic. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through Omaha and how this works. So if you remember in the boot camp video, and there's a couple other ones out there by uh, Monster on my table, uh, I'm sure Tabletop's Edge, I shouldn't speak, put words in his mouth, but he does some pretty good videos, so I wonder if he'll address the German firepower as well. But there's But the Monster on my table has an excellent video on it. Um, I have an okay video on it if you want to watch that. Um, but here's how it works. So you got all these different fire lanes. And remember, if you look at them, they they kind of overlap in some areas and like channel down into one, one subsector here. So it, it really starts to add up quickly. If you remember on Utah, what was the most we had was a two for firepower, right? That's going to be way different in this scenario. So let's just look at <clears throat> Fox Red here. So the far left of Omaha Beach with the 1st Infantry Division. Looks like we've got the 112th Combat Engineers, and we got uh, the 2nd Battalion and the 3rd Battalion of the 16th Regimental Combat Teams. Some of their some of their steps are coming in. Some of them dri didn't drift. It's just it's fun chaos. It's just really a good time. So let's go ahead and look at how we add this up. Um, so we look at everybody that can fire in here, right? So this guy, WN60, he can fire right down there because this box goes to here, and then he can shoot right down here. Uh, WN61S, his, his box is right here, so that is not next to this right here, so he cannot contribute. Remember, these dudes in the back, they can only fight in their own space. They can't fire down uh, down the map at all. And then this guy here, he doesn't have anybody in front of him, so he can fire here, 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 technically down to here, but you never have units in there, okay? So let's go ahead and do a little bit of math on how that works. This guy is going to be times two because it's down his straight south of him and nobody in the way, and he'll be times one. This is an uh, anti-tank 88. It can only fire at armored units, and it does so in its own fire phase. So let's see if I did it right. Uh, WN60 can fire at times two, so that's four. WN61N can fire at times one, so we have a total of five factors. And like I said, WN61 South cannot, it is not adjacent right here. 
And that might be worth zooming in to kind of for those of you looking. So remember, this guy is firing down this lane here at double. He's firing into a adjacent uh, sector at his regular value. And this guy is not next to it because he's here. Now, if this was one big box, then it would then it would be able to fire down there. Or if this gray box was touching this black line right here, then he could do that. But he can't. I don't want to confuse Muddy the Waters too much. But anyway, we end up with a five firepower, and that's just on the extreme end. Think of these poor dudes here in the middle. That just gets ugly, right? So there's the guy that couldn't fire, and we're firing here. Uh, the ADA can only fire one space uh, at armored units. So we got low tide, first sub phase on the AM turn, and there's no armor. So they're at a minus two when they're trying to get their letter. All right, that's going to be pretty good, a three. So now we're at five. Minus two is a one. That gives us a B, so we're going to be rolling in this box right here. Okay? So that's not going to be great for the Americans. So it's a B, and it's a minus one because there is no armor or weapon units in the box. It's all squishies because the DD tanks did not make it ashore. None of mine made it ashore. I, historically, a handful made it ashore, but none of mine did. All right, so we're in the B box. We're going to roll a three. That's going to turn into a two. And if you look, every line on there has something. The armor, infantry, engineer, weapon. Now, remember, we ignore the armor, and we're going to ignore the weapon team because they're not there. But we do not get to ignore the infantry and the engineers. And this is where I was talking about where you have multiple things that happen. So we're going to take a step loss for the infantry, and we're going to take two pins for the infantry. So that has to go on two separate units. One of them can be the unit that took a step loss. So you can apply a step loss and a pin, remember. But you can't apply two pins, okay? I don't think there's any rule on the step losses. So I don't know strategically. I haven't thought hard enough. If it's, I think with tanks and stuff, you're better to spread it out. Because those tanks, well, it doesn't matter. You'll do all your firing by step losses so, or steps, so maybe it doesn't matter. But the uh, <clears throat> the armor and the weapon team would have also taken a hit, so you can see how deadly Omaha is out of the gate. So let's go ahead and mark our guys. So we're over here now. It's going to kind of center on that. I'm just going to leave it quit uh, dinking around. So we flip him over, and you can tell when they have a step loss because they turn yellow, so it lets you know that that one's already half gone. All right. and then. They all got pinned, right? Because <coughs> we had two infantry there. They, we took two infantry pins, a step loss for the infantry, and the engineer got pinned. So, yeah, happy day over there in Fox Red. Now we're in Fox Green. So some of this goes faster than you think when you start doing it regularly because you can kind of eyeball stuff and you can see right away. All right, so Kaborg 2 and what's that? Colville 1. All right, so WN60 and 61 South, both of them can fire into here, and it's times two because nobody is directly under them. So that's one, two, three times two. That's already going to put us at six. And you got this dude right here. He's got nobody in front of him, so that's two. So that's six, seven, eight. Remember, he's only going to fire at armored units. All right, then this guy can fire with a strength of one because it's nobody's in front of him, so he can fire down here but it's only at strength one, and same with this guy, strength one. So that ends up being 10. Now, you max out at seven. So if you're doing some counting on your own and you hit seven, you don't have to go figure out other ones to make sure. But remember now, this guy fired here, but he can also fire here. So do not forget to count who everybody is that can fire here. They get to fire multiple times in each se in each subsector that they can fire into, okay? So in case I haven't been clear on that, it's everyone that can fire into this box, right? Not this guy's firing at him, you know, because this guy also fired over here, but he gets to fire here. And now this guy's going to fire here, but guess what? He'll get to fire down here too. So anyway, so we know we're at 10. You max out at 7. So I'm going to blow through my examples here. So I did 7. Uh with my modifiers, okay, what were my modifiers? Uh, and it was a negative two modifier. We rolled an eight. That becomes a six. And I'm not going to go through all the modifiers every time. 
I'm trying to speed it up a little bit here. So that gives us a B. So even with a crummy eight roll, we're still going to be on the B box. And we missed the A box by two. Okay. So you met, you start, you know, getting that firepower stacked up. So now it's a B and it's a minus one again because there's no armor helping the Americans yet. We roll a two. So that's a one. If you look across here, we would take an armor hit. We got an infantry hit and two pins. We got an engineer pin and a weapon. And I think that's the exact result we got last time. Yep, same, it says. So I said no engineers to worry about this time. Is there not engineers there? I could have swore I was looking at engineers. No, no, they're all infantry. So we, so we only have one hit and two pins. So one of the infantry will stay unpinned. So <laughs> there we go progress so you can see he's not pinned all right let's walk through this one now notice how these kind of funnel down into here we kind of covered that so this one this one and this one are all firing into to their subsector below them and there's nobody in front of him there or these guys here right so that means they'll all be at times two so one two three four that already puts us at eight okay now technically this guy would be a 9 because he can fire down here. This guy would be a 10 because he can fire down there. This guy would make it 11. And this guy would make it 12. So thank God you get to stop it at 7 because it's even worse. <laughs> so what that means, I mean, it doesn't really take anything from the Germans. It just means even once you get up here and get in these guys' face, you're still going to have some heavy firepower until you can start clearing these out or occupying the same spaces them okay so let's hope uh okay so my goal okay so i wanted to say i want to do some examples uh so we have max at seven again so we're over here at seven uh with our modifiers that brings us to a five to six so it's a b minus one again we roll an eight just like last uh or no that was the uh, number value so an eight turns into a seven so now we have two pins on armor, one pin on infantry, one hit on an engineer, and one pin on a on a weapon team. So what did we end up with? Okay, so and this is the one where I had the guy under a spade, so I got rid of him. So I moved him up there because I had a spade under him and he only has two steps, but I think I was just thinking about that armor at four steps. So that's going to be a half a step of armor gone. All right. Or I'm sorry. Mm, did I lose two steps? We'll see if I did that right now to go back and maybe fix that later. Yeah, take a look at that. Okay, so we this there was the armor there. They took a hit. They're gone. Now we get the infantry. They took a pin, so he's going to get pinned. And then if we have engineers, they took a hit as well. Now, if you take a hit, you don't get pinned. It's either a hit or a pinned. Uh, pinned isn't as bad, but hits you're losing steps. So. All right, there they are. So I think with that, I'm just going to kind of push through the rest of them so you can kind of see. Uh, and then we're going to see if we get on to the next phase here, because I honestly don't remember if this file has them. So I'm just going to kind of go through them here, and eventually I'll quit bouncing around. So you can see here what we ended up with. Oh, let me do this. Okay, so here we ended up with a pinned armor and a pinned infantry. And it looks like the engineers took a hit. And then right here, it looks like this is the one we just did before. This one, it looks like we took a step loss. And then this next one, oh, we took a step loss of an engineer. It looks like we're going to pin because I stacked them. Oh, maybe not. All right. So what I'm doing is putting the step losses. So if you look here, I marked him the 3rd Battalion of the 116th. or He's a regimental combat team. Two of these would equal a step loss. So uh, I'm sorry. Let's see what the chart is here. Am I doing that wrong? Part of me thinks I'm doing that wrong. I thought they had a chart that tells you. Yeah, okay. So an artillery battalion, ranger companies, that's three steps of uh, beach units. Uh, armored fighting vehicles is eight steps for a step loss. And then all the others are two steps. So I'll eventually figure that out and I'll convert this guy to an actual step loss. 
but I'm doing the actual units, so it's going to be a little more interesting. You'll see coming off the beach. All right, so now I'm just going to blow through so you can see the end result, okay? So you can see guys getting marked pinned. You can see guys flipping over for casualties. And eventually I'll quit using that because when I, I, I don't know how far I did it on this because I didn't know how many I was going to want to do as an example. But eventually I'll just use my sheet of paper and, and put the stats up in there so I have a record of it. All right, so let's... Uh, All right, so when it's all said and done, let's see, let's, okay, so that's it. So let's take a look at Omaha Beach. So look at the difference between Utah and Omaha. Utah, we got a pin here and a step loss and a step loss up here, a couple step losses. And those are, some of them are from these, not even from fire. And now let's take a look at Omaha. <laughs> We got one infantry left here. We got a couple pinned. We got two pinned there. A couple guys pinned there. Half the guys pinned there. This one didn't do too bad, although they took a step loss. They actually have lots of armor coming up. Uh, here we took some tank pins, and here everyone's pinned tanks and rangers except for one. So not great. Now let's go look at the UK beaches. So these pins right here were from coming over these obstacles down here. Uh, I'm not going to go through an example, but these are a little easier to do because there isn't those fire lanes that overlap and don't overlap and things like that. Um, so it's not, not too difficult. So, you know, but the, the DD tanks made a much better landing. Adjust this a little bit because I had that adjusted for zooming way in and then I can't scroll left and right. So <clears throat> you can see with all those DD tanks that made it in compared to the American Omaha beach, uh, that's going to tie these guys up for a lot less firepower. So, but let's go ahead. I'm just going to go through them quick uh, just to save time. So I like to grab the pointer so we can kind of see where the action is. I, I guess I did the examples on here too, which I'm not going to go through all those. So it's going to jump back and forth a little more than it normally would. I think I did it through the first whole thing. And then after that, I just start doing stats and not using that because when you're on, I mean, it's nice to have it on here if you don't have a sheet of paper, but honestly, I'd rather look at a sheet of paper instead of bouncing back and forth all day. So that's my preference. But anyway, we'll get through them all here. Let's go. Uh, let's just hold her down. And Well, that goes a little fast. I want to make sure I don't go too far. <laughs> all right. So we're on the last row of, uh, the Juno Beach, Sword Beach, Sword Beach. Oops, wrong thing. Sword Beach, yep. So we're on the, we're not on the, oh, I did each beach separately, so. Okay, so let's. And that should be the last box. I ended up pinning the tank. Okay, so now. Uh, we do German anti-tank fire, and I don't recall, sorry, I don't remember where all this stuff is right on these charts. Oh, so this is still part of the German fire segment, but now let's go over to the uh, Utah beach. I don't, I, can, I don't think they have any. Nope, they don't have any. So uh, Omaha would be able to fire these guys. They can fire one hex that they touch, so diagonally, whatever, and the hex they're in, but no tanks made it, so... I'll, I'll realize that here in a minute go, oh, because I go, okay, American beaches. And then I go, oh, nobody's there. So, <laughs> so then I go back here. Now, uh, I go left to right on the beaches normally, so I don't know why I'm over here. All right, so anti-tank and fire in the same box. Uh, and then it can fire again, the rules say, which I, do, I don't know how that works. I think for the assault phase, it can also fight. So anti-tank units have that have uh, fired previously in the same segment can fire, may be conducted against allied armor units in the same or adjacent boxes. Adjacent boxes must be in a lower row. So you can't fire left to right or up top, okay? If allied units occupy the same box as the anti-tank unit, the anti-tank unit may not fire outside its own box. So again, 
kind of like all the stuff. If you've read the books, if you've heard soldiers talk about it, if you've seen, you know, movies on it, get off the beach. It's the same premise in this, in this uh, amphibious modules, get off the beach, get your guys up off over the shingle and start crowding these Germans. Cause it's going to make it so these other guys can live and get there in more strength. And you just gotta, you just gotta get in there, even though the odds aren't the best. Sometimes you just keep, you just keep rolling over them like the tide, no pun intended, but okay. So we're going to roll a 1d10 for each anti-tank unit firing. And on a result of zero to three, it'll eliminate one armor step. Okay. Which is pretty, pretty good. But now this is different. You don't fire at every armor step in the box. You're just going to pick him and his target. Okay. So you got a 40% chance. Okay. So here we, I don't know why I started here instead of over there. I usually go left to right, so I'm confusing myself. Hopefully I didn't miss that. So we got a three there, so that's going to be a ping. Now, I can put it on the pin guy if I want, right? And then over here, we come over here. So I put on the pin guy. We roll a nine. That's a miss. Over here, we got one. That's a three. That's a hit. Okay? And so if you look over there, he's got a hit marker on him. And I think I figured out that that guy... Oh, maybe I didn't. I robbed the Germans of their anti-tank over here. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. I don't think it would have mattered. It doesn't matter much, but I think I forgot that one. Okay, then we go to the Allied Fire segment, which is the next segment, and you would do Naval Gunfire. Well, so the Naval Gunfire works like this. Each one of these has some values on it. So if we look, we'll hide all the units. This is the naval gun value. In the AM, everyone is a zero. There's no naval gunfire allowed in the uh, first AM turn by any beach. Then it's a three and a six. And the, the premise is when we get to it, and I'll just cover it real quick here, is if you roll this number, or I think if, I know if you beat that number, you get all of them. But I think if you roll that number or higher, you get all of them. If you roll lower than that number, you get do some math and you'll get about half of them. Okay. So we'll cover that in more detail when we get to it. But, uh, none on the first sub phase. So unpinned allied armor and weapon teams may now f make one fire attack for each step they currently possess. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's really not because if you look at this, okay, that middle number is it's, uh, you come up here. That's the fire value. So like if there's a dash, there is no fire value. The first number is the assault value. The, sec the third number would be your um, movement. Okay. So we'll come over here and we do have some steps over here. So that'll be good for Utah. So each step of a unit may fire at a different target. Each attack is conducted individually. The target of each attack is declared pri prior to the die roll. Okay. So like in this instance, you can, it's the same thing. You can fire one space, right? So these guys could fire if there's a W in here or a W in here or a W in here, but there isn't obviously, or in their own space. But there's not. So they're all going to fire at this. So I know there's uh, three steps there and three steps there. So I have six steps that I'm going to roll until I get a hit. Okay. Now, if you're playing with somebody, you'd have to say, okay, I'm going to fire my first of three here, and I'll just keep firing until I hit it, and then I'll decide what to do with this guy. Because sometimes you're going to have to make choices that, okay, we didn't get him, but I really want to get the guy that's here or whatever, right? So, <clears throat> armor and anti-tank units may fire at enemy units in the same or adjacent boxes. Invasion armor units have their fire value printed in the counter. We talked about that. Standard armor units have a fire value of three. Okay, so if they're not breakdown units, you can leave them not broken down and they'd have a three. I decided to play them where they're all broken down to three. And artillery can fire uh, a little bit different as well. Uh, Anti-tank units have a fire value of one. Uh, each step in a standard unit may fire once. Artillery units have a range of two. Artillery units have a fire value of two. Okay, and I probably should just say armor instead of anti-tank, but that's the verbiage I think they use in the rule because these are anti-tank rounds that they'd be firing. So towed artillery units cannot fire if in a beach or shingle box. Okay, so this is an armored self-propelled gun. So if you're in the beach or shingle box, you actually get into a coastal defense box and set up your artillery. Um, 
you roll 1d10 for each attack. If the D, D, die roll is equal to or less than the unit's fire value, one step is eliminated from the target unit. Now, these only have one step, so theoretically it should be kind of easy. Okay, so we're going to go here first. We got six steps, three in each, so I'm going to fire the first and see if we can get lucky with one unit, and then we'll move over to see if we want to do anything at the other tank. Now, the reason you want to do that is because as soon as one of these steps fired, this guy is going to become pinned. So I don't want to just fire all of them no matter what. I'm going to fire all of them from the first tank first. And if he doesn't knock them out, then I'll waste the second tank. By, because remember, they're going to pin, which means they can't start driving forward. Now, that being said, the seawall hasn't been breached. And that's a whole other thing we'll get into. Uh, nobody's going to be able to breach this turn anyway. So that'll be done the next video. But you have to basically breach these with Bangalores and engineers. And you have to blow holes so the tanks can start. Uh, on Omaha, they can only go up through the draws. They can't go up these cliffs. Uh, I'm sorry, these are bluffs, the red ones, and the black ones are cliffs. On here, once you breach this, you have to breach it twice, then it's big enough for the tank to get through, and the tank can just drive on up. So Utah's a lot easier. Omaha's a pain in the rear end. All right. So I need a zero for the DD tanks. Remember that, that zero number, and I have three steps with the first one. So I get a seven, an eight, and a one. So that's all misses. I'm going to do this one, and once you fire one, it's going to be pinned, so it doesn't matter. Eight, six, and a seven. So all I needed was one zero to knock this stupid guy out, and I did not do it. Okay, so I'll stack them together, put a pin marker on them, and now we'll jump. Now we'll see who else can do anything. Uh, I'm going to use the, you, it doesn't say you have to go left to right and back. You can kind of pick who you want to fire with. So... All right, now he can fire two, remember, one, two, and he needs a two or less to score a hit, and he gets a seven. So now he's pinned, and all we got left, I believe, uh, he might be able to fire, but we have these two tanks. So they can fire one, and you can fire diagonally. So here we go with the armor. Um, now, I can do one step at a time. I don't have to aim all four of my steps at WN5. So if I can get lucky and knock him out on the first or second or third hit, I can have one shot to fire at this guy still. And they all matter, trust me. So I get a four, a four, a nine, and a two. <laughs> so here we are. Not looking good for Omaha based on what we're doing on Utah. And we go over to him. I'm going to do WN5 again because obviously that's got the biggest firepower on me since he'll only ever be a 1. This guy can double up. 6, 9, 7. Oh, a 10, which remember in this game, it's a D10. A 0 is a 0. So we finally can't get him. I say, holy moly. We get rid of the WN5 on Utah. And everyone's pinned as far as the armor. Now, I still got this guy, so let's see if I did it right. That's always the fun part of doing the replay and going through it is did I remember to do everything. So he can fire two. So one, two, because maybe you can go diagonally. So I got one shot here on a zero or a ten or a one or a two. I can knock that puppy out, and it's a seven. So, <laughs> so we get nothing. Okay, now go over here and look at Omaha. Well... This is where it's bad, right? I don't know what we even, did we even have artillery? I don't think we had artillery yet on Omaha. That didn't start coming yet. That's not yet. So n all these tanks back here that are still ready to go, they can fire one. So they can only fire into the shingle box. They're still in the beach box. So that's a no-go there. Okay. And I don't know why I called it Utah. It's Omaha. So we go on to the UK beaches, okay? Now I'll probably... Let's go ahead and just do one more beach here. Uh, and then I'm going to, I don't know if I'll do the whole beach, but now you can see here where these guys are a little better, right? They have these, I think they're called Centurions. They actually have a one. So you have a 20% chance, a one or a zero of scoring a hit on this guy. That That's twice as much as the other guys. Avery's are a zero. Avery's are really good at breaching the seawall. So it's kind of a toss-up sometimes if you want to pin them or not because you want to be able to use them for breaching the seawall. All right, so let's go ahead and see what I did. Okay, so right here, uh, we're going to start, look at that guy right there, and we're going to fire at WN33. He's a zero, 
and you can fire one space. So I need a zero or less to score a hit on this bad boy right there. Seven, eight, two, one, nothing. So he'll be pinned when we're done. I still got this guy. One, one, four. Hey, we get the 10. That's a zero. So I do get it on the last one. So we're we're uh, we're high on drama on the shooting at stuff on the beach, on the beach. So just on time again. But you know what? Once we shot him with one round, you know you can't do much more. Now you can shoot at personnel units, but I'm not so much worried about them. And I can also shoot at him, but I'm more worried about these WNs mowing down. Now you can see where we knocked out this WN33. So all these guys in this sector right here, except for tanks against this anti-tank, are safe. That already, you know, is a big improvement because if you look at Omaha, we didn't even get to do anything on the first wave to shoot at them. That's just a, a disaster. All right, so let's see. What do we got now? What are we going to do now? So looks like, all right, so I jump over this guy. He's got three on him. And now remember, this is where the pin tanks, they don't get to fire. So pinning isn't the greatest thing for you. So now I got three targets. So what did I decide to do? Well, I said I'm going to take three steps at WN35 to start with. So that means if for some reason I got lucky and hit with the first two, then I could use the third one. And remember, you cannot fire into these guys right here, even if you had range. Now, he doesn't, but and you can't put artillery here, but let's say I could. Now, uh, um, the naval guns can fire into the back row. So, But uh, anyway. So let's see what happened here. So WN35, I mean, if we knock him out, this gold beach is smooth sailing almost compared to the other one. So we get an 8, 2, and a 1. That's it. He's pinned. Now we got to jump over here, right? Because this tank can only fire out to here or here and all the tanks under him. And same with over here. And I don't think they had guns yet either. Utah did. I think they're the only ones. I don't think... The British had any guns coming up yet. So it's just armor. So here we have six total steps. And we got three steps of WNs that are within range of us. So let's see what I decided to do. Now, it's been a while because I'm actually on the, July, on the June 7th turn. And, you know, this is like, I don't know, 10 files back maybe. So it's kind of fun to see what I decided to do too. So each have three. We're going to start shooting at 36 to try to help this group here. And then we'll work on 37, because if I can knock him out, that leaves no firepower, where the odds are I'll probably only get one, and then I'd still have two separate guys fighting. For me, I'm not a mathematician. I think that sounds like a good thing to knock him out, but you guys that can do a lot of quick math, maybe it wasn't. Okay, so here we go. Four, nine, eight. So the first tank does nothing. One, two, seven. None of them do anything. So. Not going so great on the uh, the opening salvo by the uh, allies. So let's do some more and see if we can show you some more fun. So I don't know. I don't know about you, but I love this stuff. It, it's just super nerdy fun. Okay. So basically anything in this back row that's tanks isn't going to be able to fire. So we got a tank here. Well, I say a tank, but there's steps, right? So three steps here. We got a tank of four here, a tank of four steps here, and a tank of four steps. We got to do some damage on this, right? All right, let's look at this guy here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this big bad boy here with two steps on WN28. And I was kind of thinking if I could get lucky and knock him out with this guy, then I can focus all of his on this guy over here maybe. So let's see. So we got this M4 DD tanks going after that Winnenstander Neston. And we get a nine. Oh, we got a zero there. That's it. And we got another zero. Yay. We're just, we are killing it. Now. I've played these beach landings a lot. I get excited. <laughs> I was fake being excited there, but I really do get excited because that is phenomenal to get, you know, you need a, you got a 10% chance and you get two hits. So those DD guys there, they're going to get some kind of medal at the end of it. So now we can jump over to this guy. Cause now if I had a shot this guy at him, then this guy's sitting here and he doesn't have anyone, anyone he can shoot at. So you got to think your targets a little bit in advance. All right, we got three of them here. Can we get lucky with that one? One, one, three. No, but you know what? We knocked out a two because him firing at these guys right in front of him, that automatically puts him at a four. And even back here, he's firing at two. So that's an important one to knock out. And we got pretty lucky there, and we'll take it. 
All right, so now we're going to jump over to here to this tank. I don't really worry about these anti-tank guns. They're not that strong. They're good at, you know, they can knock out tanks, but I'm more worried about this guy that gets to keep firing. And these WNs, you know, some of them have anti-tank guns in them. It's not, it's not like there was, you know, one anti-tank gun on Juno Beach, okay? You, you got to remember it's all relative and scale, right? So a lot of these WNs were firing in, arc, you know, lanes of fire down the beach from one end to the other with guns and machine, you know, anti-tank, artillery, and machine guns. So, all right, so what can we do here? We need a zero. I'm going after WN29. He's got two steps, so he's a big juicy one. Three, six, five. We got nothing. Oh, there's four steps, sorry. Eight. <laughs> so we got nothing anyway. Now we got this guy. He's going to go after 31 because these guys would appreciate that. Four, eight, six, one. We get nothing. Okay. And we come over to the last beach here, Sword Beach. We got one armor unit right in the middle, but it's got four steps. Next, next turn we're going to have all these armor up there it's just going to get ugly for the germans so let's see what i decided to do i honestly don't know what, okay i went right after the guy in front of him i thought well let's create an opening right in the middle five four seven eight nothing and that's it for the armor firing so now it would be allied movement okay and now this is important uh and there's some rules for that we'll see how many i post that. i'm not going to probably go through every little rule but this movement factor here is you can move forward. If you move diagonally, which you can, that adds an extra movement. So if he moves here, that's a two. Okay. Now let's just say later in the game, this guy isn't there and this has been breached. He can go one, two. And there are rules for stopping next to WNs and armor on the beach and stuff like that. So let's go ahead. And pinned units cannot move. Okay. So that's another reason pin is bad because you can't move forward. Now, Eventually, the tide will just push you forward, but you stay pinned. So that's not great. Okay, so let's uh, see if I got my pointer out. Yep, there it is. And uh, so we're going to move these guys first. And again, it's relatively simple. Uh, you can move. I'm not going to go into every individual move, but the second number is movement. So tanks have a four, but they do have some special movement rules. I don't think I put them on here, so let me just kind of read through them on here real quick for you. Again, I don't know if I'll read. Let me see how long they are. Okay, so allied movement, movement point costs. It's all right here. If you, The thing is, again, now I, I was playing with Clay the other night. And I said this on a video that he was recording. I try not to get on my soapbox, but if you're playing Goss, don't be in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, it's not for you, or at least that night. I got times when I just want to move pieces fast and stuff. I don't, you know, and, and maybe you super veteran players, you can do Goss real fast. I cannot, but I don't care. I love the detail and that stuff. So that's what I'm focused on. So just read through all this stuff. It tells you everything. Vehicle units entering a beach, shingle or pavilion pay two movement. All units pay one movement, moving diagonally through a vortex. Uh, Join one box to another. This is an addition to the cost of the box that the unit's entering. Entering a draw costs the movement. Units pay normal movement point for entering a box when exiting a draw. Personnel units may cross bluff boundaries, and then it gets into, you know, using all the movement. Commandos, it's an additional one movement is all, right? Rangers, you know, uh, stuff like that. So just read all that stuff. I'm not going to, you know, it's from here to uh, technically the draw stuff. I don't know. It's down here somewhere. Uh, seawall breach attempts okay so we're going to get into that there won't be any oh there might be some breach attempts i guess uh because the breaching comes after movement so okay so i'm just going to go ahead and do the movement so i'm moving some guys diagonally here to try to get to these wns to fire at them so i'm just going to click through the movement okay i'll do some moving around i like to organize my stacks a little bit He's important because he can unpin one of these guys and let him move forward. So I unpinned an infantry and it moved him forward. Okay. Uh, yeah. So here I put, okay, unpin units can move. Leaders can unpin a unit. Uh, un can't move, but leaders can unpin them. So he unpinned the guy. So we got an extra guy in the box over here. I didn't see where I moved him, but 
Again, we're not going to get into all the details of every little move. And I'll show you Omaha Beach here now as, as the engineers and the infantry that aren't pinned and the armor that isn't pinned move up. Uh, okay, what did I say here? Oh. Oh, uh, Rangers can breach on the move, I think it is. So he will attempt to breach. Uh, he can only breach to level one. You have to breach to level two. If you look at this guy right here, you can flip him, and that's a breach two. Okay, I think when you play the actual game, you use a, uh, a tactical assault and a prepared assault counter if you want, uh, because they have the same hollow hex or hollow arrow and the filled arrow. But uh, they they can try to breach on the move. Nobody else can do that. Okay, so zero to three, there's no modifiers. He can move afterwards, but he has to stop since he moved next to the enemy. Now, the rules don't say, but since you can move diagonally, okay, I'm going to say that's next to the enemy is kind of how I've been playing it. He gets a five, so that didn't do anything, so we'll move this next guy. So he moves up. He's going to try to breach it. He gets an eight, so he gets nothing. So my rangers stink. <laughs> the rangers don't stink in real life. My rangers on here stink today. Okay. And uh, that's it. So I'll mark them all unmoved. And let's go over to the UK beaches. Go over to the left here. And let's go ahead and do the moves. Boom. Oh, those, those Avery's and Centurions and stuff. Are, okay, what did I put here? Okay, UK beaches. Okay, Avery's will tend to breach during movement. So Avery's can breach during movement too. I don't know why I thought it was going to take a turn to breach. Again, I don't have the rules memorized. I just play through them step at a time, right? So this Avery will attempt to breach during movement. Per step eight, it, it's the base. So plus three, and German can fight. So these guys can these guys can breach on a three, which is great. Okay, and it's uh, no, that's not right. No, no, no. They they're they start out with this number right here, the eight. That's their breach value, which is brilliant. But the German that can fire in the box makes it a plus three. And then if there is minus one, if there's any friendly armor, but you cannot include the, the tank, right? Uh, all right. So let's move him up there. We move the Centurion first. He can't do anything because he will fire next turn. He's not a tank. These guys, you can see, I don't know if it'll help if we zoom in, but you can see they got the little flails on them here. So that you know, they're little chains that are whipping, and then they're going to use that to to rip up the uh, seawall and the uh, uh, minefields and the barbed wire. Okay, so we move him up. All right, so it's a plus three for German fire, mindless. So we move the centurion first, so we get the friendly armor. So now we need a six, and we have three steps, so we get three chances at a six or better to breach the seawall. See where it says seawall right here? We're going to try to breach this. We should on a six or less. Five and a five. So that's all I need. I don't need to roll the third one. So you grab the breach counter, you throw it down there, you make it a breach two. Breach one is for infantry units only, and if it's a breach two, any unit, armor, artillery, infantry, can move through that breach. Okay, so that's how breaching works. Uh, same here. So this guy's going to move here. That'll cost him an extra moving point, but that's all he's going to move. We bring the Avery up there. He's got four steps. Uh, and it's sixes again because of enemies that can fire at him and friendly armor. Three, two. So guess what? We breached it again. Okay, then we'll move this infantry up here, and we'll just keep on moving. So... I'm going to not go ahead and go through every one of these breaches. So now you see how a breach works. They have the breach number there. Okay. Uh, you can see the commando. These are commandos on American units. They're rangers. He's got a three right there. And if you go over and look at the American beaches, the engineers have a six. Okay. And that's all on your charts and stuff in your game. So pretty easy to follow. And eventually I fix these because that kind of stuff will kill me. <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to go through them. We're going to be moving guys along. I'm not going to go through every one of them, but you'll see how I get the other guys to stack on top when we're done. And we're just going to move down the beaches. So now we're over here on Juno Beach, just moving guys up. 
we want to move these guys in breach first so in case we can move infantry up or there's a chance somebody could but you when you remember when you move next to the germans you got to stop so that slows you down you can't just go running right up there but you you can uh, see here because we knocked that guy out in the middle he ran right up the gut this is like football not trivializing war, but he just run right up the gut because this guy opened it up and there was no Germans around and no extra movement point cost. So you can see the penetration that they're already getting on Juno Beach. So very nice. All right, now we're over on Sword. Same thing. We're breach. I mean, the the Americans really botched it by not. I I in the books I read, the Americans we mock them for they called them. Uh, Hobart's funnies, I think some guy named some general or colonel named Hobart came up with the idea. And uh, I, my understanding is the Americans mocked him for it. And we could have used those on Omaha. <laughs> Let's just say that we used engineers and uh, didn't go as well. Okay. Now uh, there's another rule when you're moving. Okay. Another way you get pinned is if you move too many of each step into a box, okay? So you, you kind of have to think about where you're moving stuff because this stuff keeps coming in on the boats and moving forward. If you put a bunch of armor in one area, you're going to end up not being able to use it all. So the most you can have of any unit type is six infantry units, not steps, units, so little square pieces, uh, four armor units, and one artillery type unit. Okay, so um, it it doesn't look like it now, but it really starts getting messy as the other waves start coming in, okay? Okay, so let's finish up the movement here. Uh, oh, okay, German movement. So let's go look at the German movement. There are no Germans on Utah. And if you look over here, you have to zoom in, but you'll see that they kind of like our artillery. I don't know how well this will show you. Maybe a little bit, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's kind of blurry here, but if you look here on the AM turn, it's a zero, zero, or two, okay? So they need to roll that number to be able to move, okay? Let me zoom out. Okay, so I'm going to go left to right, and all of these would need a zero, and you roll for each unit, not for each step, because you don't break up steps in this phase. Okay, so oop, he gets to move. Now they have rules because basically you play this solitaire as the allied player if you're playing with somebody else because there's rules for movement. Basically, they have to move toward the closest WN toward the beach. Okay, so he moves up into here and occupies this one. These guys would go to this one. Him, if there's an option, you can pick. So you can pick here or here. Okay. Go over here. We get a six and a seven. So they stay and we get this one. He gets a three. So nothing. Now let's go to the UK beaches and see what they got for Germans infantry. Okay. Well, we got, we got some infantry here, but they don't have to roll. Right. So the rule is they go uh, towards WNs, right? He's, he doesn't want to run up here and help this 88 because he doesn't have any fortifications. So they go over here to hunker down for, for protection. Same with him. He's going to go there. And then this guy is going to move up and help reinforce that one. Same with here. We're going to just move up. So I'm shifting them over. And this guy's already with the WN. Uh, this guy can move. Uh, hopefully I moved him that way because technically that's the shortest route. I did. <laughs> it's always a little bit of a, did I, did I do it right? Because I, you know, I played this two months ago, maybe, or a month and a half, month ago. So. All right, so we just moved the German units. They're kind of scripted. It's all in the rules and tells you how to move them, so it's not that difficult, not very hard at all. Now we do assault combat. All right, so let's go over assault stuff. I don't. We don't have any here. Okay, so we should be able to skip the American beaches. And actually, I think we're skipping all the beaches on assault. Yeah, because you have to stop the turn you get next to them, and this one penetrated deeper because of that, so... That's pretty easy to do. Uh, segment seven is demolition. Okay. So the allied player will attempt to clear beach obstacles uh, and breach seawalls and draws. Okay. Now the armor could do it on a move. Okay. 
but engineers cannot. So let's go to the American beaches first. Oops, what am I doing? A little click fest. So even though these guys are all parked up here, these these tanks can't get past this red line, this seawall. So we got to try to do that. You can save guys on the beach if you leave them in a beach box. Uh, you can leave them there and you can dedicate them to removing obstacles, but you get an, uh, you get a die roll to try to do that anyway, okay? So I like to, to use these guys to get troops moving and only do that toward the end to clear those out. All right, so engineers and commando units breach now. Uh, oh, okay, and that's a mistake I made. British commandos do not do it while moving like the rangers. It didn't matter. They all had to stop, but um, you do them like engineers, okay? So here we got engineers. We got eight steps of engineers there, okay? Uh, we need a six or less, and we need two of those, all right? And then, again, all these charts, I guess I didn't show you where charts and stuff are, but all these charts are up here. Here's the obstacle one we did earlier. Here's the DD tank. Here's the breach. Uh, here's how you breach. Tells you how to do all the breach stuff. Here's how you do naval gunfire. Okay, it's all in there, and it's also in the rule book. So just take it step by step. So we get a 9, a 0, and a 1. So that's going to give us our two breach attempts, and we're fine. And we did that with one engineer. Uh, I don't think I marked them pinned because the pin comes off. Uh, so I don't know if you mark them pinned. I'd have to check that. Some of that stuff I stop and look up while I'm playing it. Uh, here we have seven, but there's a modifier because there's Germans that are able to fire into that box. And then there's a minus one because we have some unpinned armor. So it's going to be a plus two. So we need a four or less. And here we have uh, seven steps. Did I say seven? Yeah. So one and five, one, so we're good after three rolls. So we breach those two here. Same here. We have three steps trying to breach with the fire and the modifiers. So we need a, what was it, a four or less. So we got a six, six, and a five. So, so there we did do it. Now, if there wouldn't have been the enemy there, he would have done it on the first two rolls at a straight up six. So the modifiers do matter. All right, let's go see what we can do over here on Omaha. We got one step there. Uh, there's no friendly armor, so now it's a three or less. Boom! So now we did one. We don't have another step to try, so it becomes a breach one, which means infantry now can cross the seawall. They've blown it with Bangalores or whatever, but any tanks that come up here can still not drive onto the pavilion box until there's a breach two somewhere. Then they can drive through that breach. Here we got two of them. Three or less, four, six, and I'm just going to blow through these now. There's no reason to. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, I said I should pin them, so I was marking guys pinned uh, because I forgot to pin them because they're supposed to pin. So I do come back and catch stuff a lot of times. All right, so let's uh, continue on down the line. You'll see if I get, oop, look, I got another breach there. Excited about that. Okay, then I'm going to do the beach obstacles on the American beach before I go to the UK beach. So here's what we're trying to do now is we're trying to get rid of these down here, which, remember, this doesn't represent three obstacles. This represents a relative number, you know, for game-wise. So you roll a 1d10, and you apply these following die roll modifiers. There's a minus one if there's at least one pin allied armor unit in the subsector, right? It's right here. They don't have to be in this box because no one stays in here, so they got to be in here. Plus one for each WN that can fire directly into the beach box. That's right here. Okay. So if they can fire into this beach box, they add a plus one for each one. Uh, because this represents little teams of engineers that are out there trying to blow. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're the things that's sat like this toward the ocean with a mine on them. I can't remember what they're called, but you know, you probably know what they're called. But anyway, so... Uh, Plus one for tide condition medium, plus two if the tide condition is high. Okay, so those are all up in the chart. You can look them up. Uh, all right, subtract the modifier. Okay, so then you subtract the modified die roll from nine and have the result rounding up. If the above result is greater than zero, then the result is the number of obstacle moved. Okay, so this is really simple. It's just a die roll on each one of these. So we'll do this one first. So I roll a four. Okay. 
There were no modifier. Uh, oh, there was a minus one because of uh, the armor, but there was no WNs because he can only fire out to here, right? So he can't fire into there. So it was a minus one, so that turns into, uh, I think I did that wrong. I forgot to give them their minus one, but here's what I ended up doing. I took the four from nine, okay, which ends up being a two and a half, so it rounds up to three. So you take nine minus what we rolled would be a five, divide that number by two, so two and a half, and then you round it up to three. If I would have given the minus one modifier, so again, this is one of those things where it goes to show you a lot of times if you make a mistake, it doesn't even quantify a change because I would have should have been a three because of the armor, which I forgot. You minus three from nine is six. Divide six by two, it's three. So it ends up being three either way. So then all three of these are gone. So now any other units coming in on this sector, uh, what is this, tear, tear red, I think it is? Uncle Red. Uncle Red, uh, they won't have to roll for obstacles because so many have been removed or marked. And there was guys marking safe paths. Uh, they're going to be safe. All right. Now, we do have to go down the whole line because for a beach to be fully open, all of these have to be cleared off. And I took that to mean all of these. Okay. Maybe they only meant these two because there's only two beaches that you land on Utah. But I took it to mean all of them. So, Go over here. We're going to do the same thing. We get a three again. Um, this one would have had, no, the WN can't fire in the beach box. So, again, it should have been, uh, well, three is a three. So, they're gone. We do this one. And you can see I'm lowering the number here. If it doesn't get rid of all of them, you just push this up and down arrow to lower the value. And the lower those get, the better. Okay. Now we come over here to Omaha, and since pretty much there's tons of WNs firing at everything, it gets hairier, right? I'm not going to go through all the modifiers because you can do the simple math, but if you got any questions, let me know. But you can see, because of the number of WNs that can, it's plus one for each WN, a lot of these didn't even change, okay? So another reason why we got to bog those WNs up because they are keeping our guys from doing stuff. They're basically shooting up these teams, demoralizing them, and they are not able to get the job done. I'm going to blow through the UK beaches here because this video is at an hour and 16 minutes, which is way longer than I planned. I might break up the segments. I'm not sure. The other ones, I'm probably just going to kind of blow through them and show you at the end what it looked like. Um, so you can see where each phase ended because I don't want to get into a thing where we're going through an hour and something, 15 minutes for every one of these to show you. Okay. Now we do pin recovery. Okay. Pin recovery, pin markers are removed from all units on both sides. This time during medium and high tide conditions, pinned units occupying a beach row box do not move. Their pin marker instead, they keep the marker in place and immediately move to the beach box. Okay. Uh, beach box row, oh, move from the beach box into the shingle. Kind of confused myself because I knew you moved into the shingle. So these guys are at low tide, so they get to take them off and then move into the box, but not so on the UK beaches, okay? So we're just going to step through those real quick. So we remove all those pins, then everybody moves up. Now this is where, if you if you look here, I have five, six infantry. I have three armor and a gun. So I have enough room for one more armor. And if anything else goes in there, like if another infantry used in there, it automatically causes a pin. Okay. Because I already have six. Remember, it's a max of six infantry units, four armor units, or one uh, artillery unit. Okay. So same with over here. That's the one good thing with Omaha coming in on the low tide is everyone gets to unpin and move forward. So here they go. Uh, what does this say? Oh, yeah. So here I'm just pointing out the stacking limits. If you overstack, as soon as you overstack, uh, they pin. On this one, you go straight in. I can't start going to the left or right, I don't believe. You have to go straight in where they are. Okay? I don't think you get a choice on that. I think that's the whole point of the chaos. If I'm wrong on that, let me know. 
All right. And let's go look at the UK beaches move in. Now there's a little different because they have a medium tide, right? So they don't get to take their pin markers off the guys in this back row, but these other rows get to, and then these guys will move up with the pins on them. Okay. All right, so what do we got now? Beach area clearance at the beginning of each subphase. The Allied player determines if a beach is cleared. A beach is considered cleared if there are no Juman units on the beach display. We don't have any beaches like that. All obstacles have been cleared. That's these down here, these red deals. The amphibious, uh, if cleared, the amphibious invasion stage module is complete for that beach. All Allied units remaining on the beach display may immediately move to the beach exit row box and are eligible to move to the battlefield map at the beginning of the next amphibious subphase. We are not at that position yet, so we do not get to do that. And that is the end of the log file. So I thank you for sticking with me. If you got any questions, uh, and you'll see later on I go through, because this kind of stuff right here will drive me nuts, I got to have the units on top of the breaches, right? So eventually I go through and start cleaning all these up, because that stuff, that's the little OCD there for you. That's free of charge, even here. I like to have the bigger stack stacked up so it looks like it's stacked up instead of this guy sitting on it weird. <laughs> so, again, a little more free OCD for you there. Um, that's it. If you got any questions, we have a couple of minor errors we made, but we catch those. That's the whole learning. I don't go back and change things after I've went so far, especially if they're minor. I think we ripped off the Germans on firing with an 88. And uh, we had a, one other mistake I think we made. So, but that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I really like the amphibious module. We'll go through. Uh, I got, what do I got left here? Let's take a look. That's our cat that's going nuts. All right, so that was right here. That was the German fire segment. The next video will be the second AM subphase. <coughs> Excuse me. The third AM subphase. And those will get interesting because we'll start getting off the beach. I think on the second AM subphase, you'll see some guys coming off the beach for sure. In the third AM subphase, you will. Maybe it's only in the third. I can't remember. And then you can see right here, we start the actual 6 AM turn. 6 AM part two. Axis 6 AM. And then we're back to the PM beach landings. And we go through all the beach landings again for the PM. Because remember, there's a first, second, and third subphase in the AM, a first, second, and third subphase in the PM, and a first, second, and third subphase in the night turn. And if you think that's enough to clear Omaha, it gets pretty touch and go. I'll just tell you that. So anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will uh, see you later.